hello everyone in this video I'll be talking about uh, IR spectroscopy and previously I have made a couple of videos about IR spectroscopy and if you haven't watched those videos please watch them before going into this video because we are following I'm following the uh, introduction to spectroscopy book written by Pavia as you already know if you have watched my previous videos so this is the uh, topic infrared spectrophotometer uh, okay and this one is the topic infrared spectrophotometer and first I will discuss how this instrumentation work and then we will discuss how sample is prepared the instrument that determines the absorption spectrum for a compound is called an infrared spectrometer or more is precisely it's called a spectrophotometer Two types of infrared spectrometers are in common use in our laboratory: dispersive and Fourier transform. Uh, dispersive and Fourier transform instruments. Both of these types of instruments provide a spectra of compounds in common range from 4,000 to 400. So the range is for IR is from 4,000 per centimeter to. To 400 that is the range of an IR spectrum that you commonly see in the spectrum so whenever you record in a spectrum it gives you the information in this region from 400 to 4000 although the two provide nearly identical spectra for a given compound FT a Fourier transform will provide the infrared spectrum much more rapidly than the dispersal instrument so FT IR spectrometers or Fourier transform are better than the dispersive one. So one should always select the FT IR spectrophotometer to record the IR spectrometry. So this one is better FT IR. Let's discuss first what are dispersive infrared spectrometers. So figure 3.2.3 that is the figure 2.3. A systematically illustrate the components of a simple dispersive infrared spectrophotometer. As you know, there are two types of spectrophotometer one is dispersive, and another is Fourier transform. The instrument produces a beam of infrared radiation from a hot wire and by means of mirrors divides it, in, it into two parallel beams of equal intensity radiation. If you look at here, there is a beam of infrared source energy and there is a mirror this one is a mirror this one is a mirror so now the sample is placed in one of beam and the other beam is used as a reference the beams then pass into monochromator which disperses each into continuous spectrum frequencies of infrared light the monochromator consists of a rapidly rotating sector called beam chopper that passes the two beams alternately to a diffraction grating a prism in older instruments the slowly rotating diffraction grating varies the frequency of a wavelength of radiation reaching the thermocouple detector the detector senses the ratio between the intensities of the reference and sample beams in this way, the detector determines which frequencies have been absorbed by sample and which frequencies are unaffected by, by the light through the sample. After signal from the detector is amplified, the recorder draws the resulting spectrum of the sample on a chart. It is important to realize that the spectrum is recorded as the frequency of infrared radiation changes by rotation of the diffraction grating. Dispersed instruments are said to record a spectrum in the frequency domain. Let's explain again in this case. So we have an infrared energy source which whose energy is divided with a mirror and one, one mirror is a reference and another mirror is sample. So this is a reference cell and this is a sample cell and a reference cell goes into a beam chopper and sample cell also goes to there. And then from beam chopper we have two mirrors again which divide this thing 
and after that we have a slit and through a diffraction grating system this is a dispersive IR and it is goes to detect detector and then to the amplifier and then we get the spectrum again from this in irradiation goes to sample beam and goes to beam chopper from beam chopper goes to slit and from slit goes to diffraction grating and from diffraction grating goes to detector and from detector goes to amplifier and from amplifier goes to give you the spectrum so this is the dispersive uh, IR and now let's have a look at the Fourier transform IR so this was the figure A as you can see that's the figure A is for dispersive IR and this is the figure B for Fourier transform spectrophotometer so again we have the irradiation source and a fixed mirror and the light passes through it and we have the moving mirror there and this is the infrared source coming through and it goes into the sample and then goes into the detector and then goes into the computer which performs Fourier transform and gives you the spectrum so this is the infrared interferogram the signal the computer sees in this case so this is the FTIR spectrophotometer instrumentation note that it is customary to plot frequency wave number versus light transmitted not light absorbed so IR spectrum usually you see there is a wave number on the x-axis we write it like this per centimeter and there is the uh, percentage uh, transmittance in the y-axis so this is y-axis and this one is the this is y-axis and this is the x-axis okay so this is x-axis and this top one is the y-axis so the spectrum is recorded and up in this way this is recorded as percent transmittance because the detector records the ratio of the intensities of the two beams is divided by ir times 100 that is how you calculate percent transmittance where is is the intensity of the sample beam is is the intensity of sample beam and ir is the intensity of the reference beam in many parts of the spectrum the transmittance is nearly 100 percent meaning the sample is nearly transparent to radiation of the frequency does not absorb it maximum absorption is thus represented by a minimum on the chart even so absorption is traditionally called a peak the chemists often obtains the spectrum of a compound uh, by dissolving it in a solvent the solution is then placed in the sample beam while pure solvent is placed in the reference beam in an, in an identical cell the instrument automatically subtracts the spectrum of the solvent from that of the sample the instrument also cancels out the effects of the infrared active atmospheric gases carbon dioxide and water vapor from the spectrum of sample and they are present in both beams this convenience feature is the reason most dispersive infrared are double beam sample class reference instrument that measure intensity ratios since the solvent absorbs the in both beams it is both terms as is divided by ir cancels out if a pure liquid is analyzed no solvent uh, analyzed the compound is placed in the sample beam nothing is inserted in the refer reference beam when the spectrum of the liquid is obtained the effects of the atmospheric gases are automatically cancelled since they are present in both beams now let's discuss the Fourier transform spectrometer the most modern infrared spectrometer photometers operate on a different principle the design of the optical pathway produces a pattern called interferogram the interferogram is a complex signal but it's a wave-like pattern contains all the frequencies that make up the infrared spectrum an interferogram is essentially a plot of intensity versus time time domain spectrum is also called interferogram 
However, a chemist is more interested in a spectrum that is a plot of intensity versus frequency, a frequency domain spectrum. A mathematical operation known as Fourier transform can separate the individual absorption frequencies from the interferogram, producing a spectrum virtually identical to that obtained with a dispersive spectrometer. This type of instrument is known as Fourier transform infrared spectrometer or FTIR. The advantages of an FTIR instrument is that it acquires the interferogram in less than a second. It's really quick. It is thus possible to collect dozens of interferograms of the same sample and accumulate them in the memory of a computer. When a Fourier transform is performed on the sum of accumulated interferogram, a spectrometer a spectrum with a better signal to noise ratio can be plotted. An FTIR instrument is therefore capable of greater speed and greater sensitivity than a dispersion instrument. A schematic diagram of an FTIR is shown in figure 2.3b which we discussed already. The FTIR uses an in interferometer to process the energy sent to the sample beam in the in the spectrophotometer in this in the interferometer the source energy passes through a beam splitter a mirror placed at 45 degree of the incoming radiation which allows the incoming radiation to pass through but separates it into two per per perpendicular beams one undeflected the other oriented at 90 degree angle one beam the one oriented at 90 degree figure 2.3b goes to a stationary or fixed mirror and is returned to the beam splitter the undeflected beam goes to a moving mirror and is also returned to the beam splitter the motion of the mirror causes the path length that second beam transverses to vary when the two beams meet at the beam splitter they recombine but the path length differences differing wavelength content of the two beams cause both constructive and destructive interferences. The combined beam containing these interference patterns is called the interferogram. This interferogram contains all of the radiative energy coming from the source and has a wide range wavelengths. The interferogram generated by combining the two beams is oriented towards the sample by beam splitter. As it passes through the sample, the sample simultaneously absorbs all of the wavelengths frequency that are normally found in its infrared spectrum. The modified interferogram signals the signal that reaches the detector contains information about the amount of energy that was absorbed at very wavelength frequency. The computer compares the modified interferogram to a reference laser beam to have a standard comparison. The final interferogram contains all the all of the information in one time domain signal, a signal that can not be read by a human. A mathematical process called a Fourier transform must be implemented by a computer to extract the individual frequencies that were absorbed and reconstruct plot, what we recognize as a typical infrared spectrum. Computer infrared spectrum FTIR instruments operate in a single beam mode. To obtain a spectrum of a compound, the chemist first obtains an interferogram of the background, which consists of infrared active atmospheric gases, carbon dioxide, and water vapor, oxygen, nitrogen are not infrared active. The interferogram is subjected to a Fourier transform, which yields the spectrum of the background. Then the chemist places the compound sample into the beam and obtains the spectrum resulting from the Fourier transform of the interferogram. This spectrum contains absorption bands for both the compound and the background. The computer software automatically subtracts the spectrum of the background from the sample spectrum, yielding the spectrum of the compound being analyzed. The subtracted spectrum is essentially identical to that obtained from a traditional double beam dispersed instrument. As you can see, this is the IR spectrum. This is the crystal where you put your sample and then you apply the pressure with the knob. This is the knob, you apply the pressure with this knob and this one is a knob, you apply pressure on this sample and this is a diamond crystal, this is a diamond crystal plate and volatile liquids cover, pointed concave and powder tips and this is also again now you can see this uh, spectrum of IR on the computer and the computer performs the Fourier transform so all you need to do IR is turn on the instrument, put your solid material here, that's it, and press this thing 
up to 80% and you will get the spectrum. If the sample is liquid, do not lower it down, just drop cost here and press start and you will get the spectrum. That's it easy. So the, if your sample is solid, just put your solid here, where my red point a, pointer is and then lower this one down and tighten it up to 80% and then press start you will get dial spectrum but if, you are, if the sample is liquid then just one drop is enough for IR the minimum amount of sample is required just one, one milligram or less than one milligram will be enough for IR so if your sample in liquid in any solvent so first run the spectrum of a solvent then drop cost it so the instrument will automatically subtract the uh, spectrum of the solvent so this is the Fourier transform instrument which you can easily and within a minute you can get the spectrum of IR I hope uh, this this is the preparation of a sample for infrared spectroscopy to determine the infrared spectrum of a compound one must place the compound in a sample holder or cell in infrared spectroscopy this immediately poses a problem glass and plastics absorb strongly throughout the infrared region of the spectrum cells must be constructed of ionic substances typically sodium chloride or potassium bromide potassium bromide plates are more expensive than sodium chloride plates but has the advantage of usefulness in the range of 4000 to 400 sodium chloride plates are used widely because of their relatively low cost the practical range or their use in a spectrometry extends from 4000 to 650 per centimeter. Sodium chloride signal begins to absorb at 650 and any bands with frequencies less than this value will not be absorbed. Since few important bands appear below 650, sodium chloride appears or in most common use or routine infrared spectroscopy. If your sample is liquid, a drop of liquid organic components placed between a pair of polished sodium chloride or potassium bromide plates referred to as salt plates when the plates are squeezed gently a thin liquid flame forms between them a spectrum determined by this method is referred to as neat spectrum since no solvent is used salt peaks break easily and are water soluble organic compounds analyzed by this technique must be free of water the pair of plates is inserted into a holder that fits into the spectrometer if the sample is solid, the, there are at least three common methods for preparing a solid sample for spectroscopy. The first method involves mixing the finely grounded solid sample with powdered potassium bromide and pressuring the same mixture under high pressure. Under pressure, the potassium bromide melts and seals the compound into matrix. This result is a KBR pellet that can be inserted into a holder in a spectrometer. The main disadvantage of this method is that potassium bromide absorbs water which may interfere with the spectrum that is obtained. If a good pellet is prepared, the spectrum obtained will have no interfering bands since potassium bromide is transparent down to 4,400 per centimeter. The second method is mujol mul, and was grinding the compound with a mineral oil mujol to create a suspension of the finely ground sample dispersed in the mineral oil. The thick suspension is placed between the salt plates. The main disadvantage of this method is that the mineral oil obscures bands that may be present in the analyzed compound mutual bands 29-24 and this one. The third common method used with solids is to dissolve the organic, sol uh, organic compound in a solid most commonly tetracyl, uh, carbon tetrachloride, again as, we, as was the case with the mineral oil. Some regions of the spectrum are obscured by bands in the solvent, although it is possible to cancel out the solvent from the spectrum by computer instrument technique. The region around 785 is often obscured by the CCL strange stretch that occurs there. Okay, that's that's what is uh, that, that was it all about in this video. We we'll discussed the instrumentation of IR and how to prepare the sample for IR. Oh, yeah, I'll be making more videos about IR spectroscopy and following the same book, the Pavia. And if you have any questions and comments, please drop down in the comments section. Thanks. Take care. Bye.